Hello everyone, uh, Darko2012 here with Global Government News, and I'm reading an article titled The Sharp Dressed Man Who Aided Matalab Onto Flight 253 Was a Government Agent. And this article was originally carried from this site, but it was linked to Infowars.com, but I'm going to read it from Infowars.com just because it's, it's a little easier for me to read on the white and black instead of this. But I just wanted to show you that... Um, this is the original person, these are the original couple, um, the Haskells, um, who were witnesses to this sharp-dressed man that was reported to aid Metalib, the Christmas Day underwear bomber, onto Flight 253, which later, uh, you know, he had his, un he, his, uh, his underpants exploded and it wasn't diarrhea. Um, but I just wanted to show you this page because, you know, Lori's liberal realm and um, Haskell's law firm on Facebook, these people are credible uh, people, man. They, they're they professionals, you know. Here they are right here. You know, he was on Infowars.com, uh, Kurt. And, you know, they're basically, they were invest they were interrogated, investigated, and, and they, all they were trying to say was basically where's the photo Where's the photo and the video footage of, you know, when Matala boarded the plane? And, of course, that video never came out um, when the whole incident happened and these people came forward and they were harassed and they were threatened to stop talking. So we're going to get into this story, um, but we're going to read it on here. I just wanted to show you that who, who these people are and give you a little background on them. And it says here, this is a little disclaimer that they wrote, Please note that in the article that follows, I am not claiming that the U.S. government knew Matalab had a bomb or intended to hurt anyone on Flight 253 when the U.S. government let him board. They're just trying to say, or they're just trying to show you that, that this sharp-dressed man uh, did exist by, you know, even if the government wants to deny that, um, he did exist and he did aid uh, this man onto Flight 253 without a passport and with a visa that was flagged and with his father who is a wealthy man just like Osama bin Laden's family who uh, who basically warned intelligence agencies prior to the incident. So here we go. Since our flight landed on Christmas Day, Lori and I have been doing everything in our power to uncover the truth about why we were almost blown up in the air over Detroit. The truth is now finally out after the publication of the following Detroit news article. And uh, I'm not sure what this is right here, but here's the post right here. And it says, let me, uh, let me quote from the article, quote, Patrick F. Kennedy, an undersecretary for management at the State Department, said Abdul Matalab's visa wasn't taken away because intelligence officials asked his agency not to deny a visa to the suspected terrorists over concerns that a denial would have foiled a larger investigation into al-Qaeda threats against the United States. It says, revocation, and this is important because we'll get to that, why. Revocation action would have disclosed what they were doing, quote, uh, Kennedy said in a testimony before the House Committee on Homeland Security. Allowing Abdul Matalib to keep the visa increased chances federal investigators would be able to get closer to apprehending the terror network he is accused of working with or trying to infiltrate and gain intelligence, rather than simply knocking out one soldier in that effort. Now it has all become apparent. Let me detail everything we know about the, sh quote, sharp-dressed man, or SDM. Um, while being held in customs on Christmas Day, I first told the story of the sharp-dressed man. My story has never changed. His third point is, the FBI visited my office on December 29, 2009, and showed me a series of approximately 10 photographs. None, of, none were of the uh, sharp-dressed man. I asked the FBI if they brought the Amsterdam security video to help me identify the SDM, uh, which in his previous article, or on uh, when he was being uh, interviewed on Infowars, Doc, uh, Prison Planet and Infowars, Alex Jones show, uh, you know, he's a lawyer. And so, of course, the first thing he said is like, okay, where's the video? Let's, let's uh, if you really want to know, <laughs> pull out the video. And of course, they never produced it. And so that was like a big red flag for these uh uh, for these um, lawyers, but they acted as though my request was ridiculous. The FBI asked me what accent the SDM spoke, and I indicated that, that he had an American accent 
uh, similar to my own. I further indicated that he wore a tan suit without a tie, was Indian looking, around 50, 6 feet tall, about 250, 260, and I further indicated that I did not believe that he was on the air, that he was an airline employee or that he was not on our flight. The fourth point that um, Kurt Haskell uh, makes is during the first week of January 2010, Dutch military police and the FBI indicated that over quote 200 hours of Amsterdam airport security video had been reviewed and it showed nothing. The fifth point is the mainstream media picked up the show the quote shows nothing story which slanders my story after visiting my office twice for a flight 253 special dateline nbc and chris hansen indicated that my story was quote uns uns uh, unsubstantiated rumor uh dispelled as myth and our story did not air during the tv special uh his sixth point is Sixth point is, on January 2nd, 2010, I received a call from a Flight 253 passenger who indicated to me that it may be in my best interest to stop talking publicly about the sharp-dressed man because he believes that I am, quote, wrong in what I say. He did not make any claims that he uh, saw the sharp-dressed man boarding gate uh, incident at all, and this call was made out of the blue after he made a, quote, uh, revelation of this event on January 1st, 2010. I later discovered that this caller has ties to the U.S. government. And then on January 20th, 2009, current director of the National Counterterrorism Center, or NCTC, Michael Leiter, made a startling admission. Leiter indicated that, quote, I will tell you that when many people, or when people come to, my co or come to the country and they are on the watch list, it is because we have, a, we have generally made the choice that we want them here in the country for some reason or another. That's kind of a weird statement. On January 22nd, 2010, Congress Daily reported that intelligence officials, quote, have acknowledged the government knowingly allows foreigners who, whose names are on terrorist watch lists to enter the country in order to track their movement and activities. Congress Daily also reported, citing an unnamed, quote, intelligence official that Michael Leiter's statement on January 20th reflected government policy and told the publication, in quote, in certain institutions, it is our advantage to be able to track individu individuals who might be on a terrorist watch list because you can learn something from their activities and contacts. And of course, you know, people that are, let's say, six years old and a Boy Scout, well, they're on the terror watch list and they'll get messed with. All right. And I'm not making that up. That's actual story. It's happened at the airport. Um, the ninth point on January 22nd, 2009, ABC News published an article that shoot a change. Uh, position in the government's official story. And it says, please see the following blog post for the uh, information. And it says the haskellfamily.blogspot.com. And I'll post a link for that in the right side, like I always do. So you can check out this whole article and all the links. The sharp dressed man could not be from Al Qaeda. When speaking at the counter in Amsterdam, the sharp dressed man said he was following, uh, said the following He is from Sudan. We do this all the time. Uh, who is we if it is? Al-Qaeda, you surely don't make such a statement to an airport security official. And an 11th point, the sharp-dressed man could not be from airport security. The sharp-dressed man did not dress in any uh, security uniform and did not appear to have any security badge. He also did not speak with a Dutch accent. The sharp-dressed man in a suit, uh, coat, and pants. If the SDM was a higher-up security official, he would not have had to convince the ticket agent to let Metalib on the plane without a valid pa passport. Instead, he would have just ordered her to do it. Could the SDM have been a U.S. government official? He dressed in a suit and not a security uniform. Check. He indicated we do this all the time. Could we be the government? Check. He spoke English with an American accent. Check. Would he need to convince the ticket agent that his, it was normal procedure to board without a passport? Check. Would he have the ability to obtain such clearance? Check. Could he enter a security area even though he wasn't a passenger? Check. Would the ticket agent likely refer this request to a manager? Check. And would the U.S. government not want this information to be public and try to hide it? Check. And uh, I'm running out of time here, but I'll get to this uh, 13th point, which is the Amsterdam security video has not been released. A much more uh, minor airport security violation occurred at the Newark, uh, New York, New Jersey airport several days after a flight 253 incident, and the video was released shortly thereafter. So there you go. There's 14, 14th point, and then 
these right here. So you can check it out for yourself. I'll post the link. Thanks, everyone.